Okay, my exceedingly wonderful, outstanding, intelligent, attractive friends. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, no toes, obviously. Well, what are no toes? Well, let's see what ChatGPT has to say about no toes. This is what I put in what are no toe mud fossils. And this is the response. No toe mud fossils, also known as mud space fossils, incorrect, it's all one word, are a concept proposed by Roger Spur who suggests certain geological formations, particularly mudstones and shale, not particularly, they're all rocks, are actually the remains of giant ancient organisms. They don't have to be giant. I never said they were all giant. I, there are giants, yes such as humans or other large creatures, such as dragons, yes. According to Spur, these formations are not typical fossils, but rather the preservation of soft tissues of these ancient beings. Yes. It's pretty obvious. Let's, let's dig in a little deeper. Let's see what the other experts have to say. <laughs> the real experts, not like me, spur of pseudoscientists. Let's see what the real experts say about fossilization and the recent discoveries Roger Spur made. <laughs> okay, my friends, before we start, I just want to make a very bold, you know, claim that I personally, Mud Fossil University, and directly to me, because I am Mud Fossil University, I personally have more researchers directly working with me than anybody else in the entire world. Because my researchers know what to look for and are going out and finding them just like that. I, I offered the 15 minute challenge. What I am going to show you is, is absolutely stunning. How quickly you can change your life in 15 minutes. Your life turns around in a circle because you realize virtually everything that you've been told about history and geology and all of that stuff is, is not correct. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Let's discuss it. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. But if you can come up with a reason that I am wrong, I would love to discuss it. I have evidence to support every word I'm saying. And we're going to get deep into this because now we're going to go into no toes. I looked up on chat GPT. I said, what's the story with no toes? And right up, they came over. Roger Spur claims they're... Anyway, it, 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 it talked about me. It says, I'm the one that said these things are creatures, ancient creatures that turn to stone. And then it says how, you know, mainstream doesn't really go along with this, da, da, da. But then you go and look up at Yale and they say, yeah, absolutely. These creatures turned to stone by, it was, it's called, uh, well, here it is right here, hold on. Here it is right there. Exceptional preservation of soft body creatures promoted by silica rich oceans. Precisely what I reported to Yale years before they wrote their paper in 2016. Nobody's ever heard about this basically because this upends all of their, their teachings. So this has been suppressed for well over 10 years. And I was the one who originally discovered it. And I even was so frustrated that I wrote to David Attenborough. I said, can you help me with this? You've got a public persona. These things are real. They're mud fossils. And it's something they didn't understand. And then I, stupid as I was, I said, and they're not this old. They're only, I probably told him, like 3,500 years old or something. And he wrote back and said, I'm not interested in anything that's not millions of years old. Well. They say they're millions of years. They're not. These things are sitting. Where did I show you where these things were found? It's unbelievable. Every single thing that I'm presenting to you was found literally on top of the earth. Some of it like this deep. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It's just stunning. It depends where you are. You have to be in a certain area that has a runoff which will drag away all of that sediment basically that w and, and eventually it will 
I suppose, expose these creatures. Or I don't know exactly why they're sitting way up on the top of the earth. All I can say is it's not 500 million years ago. And that is the story they're telling. And they show big layers of things, hundreds and hundreds of feet deep, layer after layer after layer after layer being sediment. No, it's not sediment. This stuff is soft tissue that's turned hard. Even Yale changed the name of geology. They said, well, geology doesn't apply anymore. And they show a big mud fossil right in the thing where they say we're changing our name to more reflect the fact that mud fossils is everything, basically. They didn't say that, but they might as well because it is. So let's get started. Where do I show you the things that are discovered by my researchers, mud fossil researchers, not by Yale, not by Harvard, not by any of these academics who already have a narrative that they will not even investigate, no matter what the evidence is, DNA, CAT scan, specimens, chemistry. I've even recreated the process. And as a matter of fact, I have a, one going on right now with a couple of mice that unfortunately met a tragic end trying to invade my house. <laughs> And I figured, well, what the hell, I'll see if they turn into stone. So I used some silicates, which is salacious ooze, and some water. I didn't boil them, though. That's the key. I think you might have to boil before you let them soak in that, in that soup. And, and, but they turn to stone. I mean, hard as can be. Um, the things that I have, well, everything that you see is going to be stone. So, obviously, they turn to stone. Let's take a look at this stuff and then later I'm going to go into the deepest regions of my exploration area because I forgot to show you the gigantic fingertip the other day which I really don't have access to. I can get to within about 20 feet of it but that's about it um, because I, I sold that piece of property and that is on the, a guy's property. I don't want to go mess around on his property so um, but it's there. I have pieces of it here, so it's it's not like I can't show it. It's there, and it is there, and I will go out and show you that, which requires a very long distance. <laughs> Three, four acres I have to go to get there. <laughs> okay, my friends, as promised, every day, every day is a shocker du jour, and multiple shocker du jours most of the time. That, my friends, what do you think it is? <laughs> what do you think that is? If this continued on and had toes on the end of it, <laughs> that looks to me like it is quite likely the lower part of a leg with the foot partially eroded. Now, I've looked at this pretty carefully, and there is virtually no question. Now, this is on top of the surface of the earth. This is not buried deep inside the earth, surface of the earth, and I find these things everywhere. Not only that, wait till I show you what my good friend Tish Egerton found. Here's Tish. She got legs. No, anyway, this is a no-toe that's pretty well eroded. You see the toes? They're, they appear to be in there, but they're surrounded like this one here. Basically, this is the same sort of situation. All right, this is where the fibula is. You have a tibia that comes down, right, straight down into the main bone. And then there's a piece on the side of everybody's foot that is the fibula. There's a second bone that comes up. They fall right off. That's the, where the fibula was. Falls right off because it's only held in by a couple of ligaments that surround it and hold the bone. So the bone is like here, and the ligaments go around it to... to just hold it, that's all. It's just, it just, it rocks, so your foot can do all these little twisty things. And that, it's still got all the red blood in it, and that's the foot. Now, again, I had, this is the one I have from here. People find them all over the place. They're just everywhere. If you look around and you pay attention, you can find them very quickly, because this was a 15-minute challenge. I put out the thing, I said, anybody can't find a mud fossil in 15 minutes, I want to know. <laughs> Everybody found them, 100%. I got no buddy that couldn't find them. All you got to do is go find some rocks. And if you pay enough attention, you're going to find the, the body parts that are in there. You look at that, you say, well, it's just a rock. No, it isn't. It's a piece of meat. And that's the fascia that's on top. And that's the spurlock, which I have discovered, which holds this chunk of meat into another chunk of meat. This is serious stuff. I call them mud fossils, all one word, not mud space fossils. Now, 
So she's going out for 15 minutes. She, walks, she says, okay, I'll take the challenge. She goes out 15 minutes, she finds this. But wait till you see where she found it. And what else she found? I mean, it's just stunning. She goes out and she finds it right there. She's sitting right there. It's just the thing, she's sitting right there. She picks it up. <laughs> there it is. It's laying on the top of the surface. These are bones, you see that? That's a bone, that's a bone. This guy just died in the stuff. This fell down around him. Stay, stay. This isn't even covered up. There's no dirt on top of it or anything. He just grabbed it, picked it up, and says, holy smoke, it's a foot. Well, yeah, it is a foot. Then she found this. This is the killer. <laughs> this is the killer. You see this? That's the heel bone. Well, it's the, the calcanus. I'll show you what, what it is. It's, it's the, the tendon. It's Achilles, Achilles tendon. And then this strap runs up to where the bone would have come down here. So there would have been a bone. Wait a minute. I have one around here somewhere. Something similar to this. All right? That's a bone like this. It would sit in that cradle. And as you walk, it just sort of rocks in that cradle. Now, what are these things? Oh, those are just seashells. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Those are springs. I have studied this thing inside and out. This thing twists like this on this pin and is attached to this. It runs up to this. And as it pulls, it twists in like this, it's, it's loading its spring up. Most of the time, it's just going to do this as you walk. So this will go a little bit, but not much. Once you start running, you see this cavity in here? This thing steps, it goes like this. Well, what happens here? This has to follow down with this. It follows down, pulls this assembly in from that right here, and pulls this whole thing into that cavity. So this loads up, and then it starts to pull this in, and that loads up. So now you got a double spring action, and then when you, it just automatically goes down by itself. You don't have you, know, you don't have these muscles or anything. I mean, this is spring loaded, not too bad. I don't know why they went away from this design. It seemed to be pretty effective. But I'm gonna show you this in a microscope. I have it here. This is the abrupt transition of the tendon that runs up to hold the bone. I, have, I, I, I show you the anatomical here. I have it somewhere. Oh, here it is right here. Now, this is, this is mine. This is from Tish. And remember this, you see the way his toes are going off to the side like this? Now, I don't know whether that was an old construction or what, but they all seem to do that. I have, I have another one here that is uh, totally into sandstone. Well, wait till I show you that one, because uh, that's, a, that's a mind blower on its own. They all are, this is crazy stuff. That one there is just, this is like brand new, it's just like come out of the box yesterday. Now. This is the one I just showed you that has the spring loads. Our feet are designed like this. All right, we have bones and all that stuff. This has the springs. Totally different. But the heel is exactly the same. You see the heel right here? That's this heel ball right there. That strap that runs up to the bone that would have come down here, that strap is right there. That's this strap. All right, they're under tension. They, and that's what keeps this bone pulled down to this heel, but it can still flop around as you run. That's the, 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 it's like an elastic band, basically. And when they snap, they create a wrinkle zone. That's the wrinkle zone right there. And I can show you this very, very, very clearly. You see that? That's the wrinkle zone. See how nice and flat it is here? And where it broke, it came boing, and it created this wrinkle zone. And these things here, there's no question what this is. It's a, it's a foot, and, um, and that's the heel. And there's a lot to take away from this if you really study it. There's different, like see this? This is what I think they call a gummite. And as this end hit the ground, this would lift up, and it would, it's a bumper pad, like it would boom. Boom. You see how fuzzy, gluey, gummy it looks? As it was in the body, it was probably like a rubbery, bumpy pad there. Because this would have to go this way and come back, and go this way and come back every time you walk. You're going to have to do something. It's going to be moving. It's going to be moving. So you get this here. This whole thing is going to give you that separation between the two springs. I, I, I look for the details. So And this takes time to do this. It's not like a five-minute job and you figure everything out. 
Now don't forget, this is the 15 minute challenge. She came back with all this stuff. There's another foot. You see how the toes are going way off to this side? This is different than this one. This one's a different foot. But it has the same sort of structure. They're, they're inside. You see the toes are inside. This is another one too. And then she has this one where the toes are just, they're inside, but they're like, like in the little sausage looking things. This almost looks like a, a wing nut. I'm not kidding you. Look at it. I think I got a better shot of that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, this I, try, I, I could watch this all day long. I do. I, I study this stuff a lot. Well, I, I don't have it here. But anyway, and then I got this one here. You see this? This is a whole leg from a no toe. And it has these little spring jobbers in there. And this is a, a whole assembly, like a cap. It lets this rock like this on this pin. And this is, is tendon. The white stuff is really tough. The red stuff is the bloody flesh. <laughs> and that is a foot. And that's the tip of the foot. And it rocks in this assembly right here. This stuff is it's serious stuff. If you look at it and you start to understand what you're looking at. I have all this stuff here. Tish sent it to me. And so I have the, the foot, and I have this, and I have a no-toe thing. I'm going to show you this stuff. Well, pretty much the, the pictures are the best way to show it. Uh, I might put something in the microscope. We'll see. Uh, but I, I have so much of this, it's, uh, it's just too much to dismiss. It can't be dismissed. It, it, it can be dismissed, but that's not right. That, that shouldn't be the way stuff is done. And this just shows you, this is sitting right on top of the, and this is the bones. I'm sure these are little bone scraps. You see these different colors? Those are transition metals. And I think these are bone scraps. The thing just must have died, I don't know how long ago, but there's another bone scrap there. All of this could be really studied well. And she is right out in, I, I think she's in Missouri. I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, and um, she tried to present this to the, you know, people that look into this stuff oh no 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 just eroded rocks then I had another guy right in the same area found the same stuff and he talked to he called Yale and talked to Derek Briggs and Derek Briggs says talk to this guy at some school over there in uh, where he was in Missouri because he's the guy that does the car stuff and the guy told him no 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 that's just all eroded that's just rocks that's nothing can you imagine how 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 anybody could miss this how can anybody miss that? That's, it's just impossible. So what is the alternative? Nobody is this incompetent. Let me just put it straight forward to you. Nobody is this incompetent. I don't care how, how, how they can present themselves as, as, a, as an instructor, as a teacher, as a learner, as a, as a researcher, as an as, as a intelligent thinker. And just out of hand, it didn't, didn't, didn't even want to talk to him. No, there's no discussion to have here. This is just all wrong. Go away. And that's a, that's another buddy of Derek Briggs. That's how they teach him. <laughs> I mean, come on, come on, come on. Right? It's just too much. And I have not only this style of no-toe with the springs in it. This, I think, is a different style and has only one set of springs. And that goes on this pin right here. And that whole set rocks. I believe. That's all I can take out of that. But I say that's the pin in the center. I know they have springs, most of them. Um, and, you know, you can see where this, the, the fibula, I mean, the tibia sat right in there. And the fibula sits on the side. That's the second bone. And this here indicates to me that there was blood in here, first of all. Secondly, that this thing rocked, this whole end here, rocked up and down as the guy walked. There's the bottom of the foot. And there's the bumper on the back. That's a heavy-duty knuckle there that hits the ground first. And this thing almost looks like it has, <laughs> has a soul built into it. I mean, it is. What can I say? That's what it is. If you look at it, that's what it is. There is no discussion to have other than looking at it and then just say, well, let's look at is, where's the blood. Well, the blood is right there. And I have another one that's turned 100% into sandstone, just literally solid sandstone. And guess what? It has blood in it too still. And guess what? 
there's moss growing out of that blood. It's been in my shop for at least 10 years. And there's no water, no nothing. This moss is still growing. That's why I say red, I mean, um, red blood, basically, which would be an artery that this is growing. And I'll show it to you in a microscope. It, it cr creates green moss. They love it. They'll eat it all day long. They love moss. I mean, it, moss loves biology. It loves to grow on membranes, basically. Well, when I say membranes, I mean the membranes uh, coat the, the um, arteries and so forth. But primarily it's the blood that they're, they're living off of, I believe. I'm almost sure of that. It's the blood. Let's just go with that for now because I can show you many, many cases of... Well, let me just show you something right now that will blow your mind. As again, I'm showing there, is, where there was giant creatures on Earth in those days, and they were giant. This thing here, these are people standing down here. You see this? They're like little they're like flakes of skin off of this. And that, I'm telling you, that's a foot. I don't care what you say. You can say anything you want. But if, if you've got eyeballs and a brain, even a couple of microbes of your brain working, you know what that is. It's a foot. Now, inside of your body, you have all these little tendon balls. The little round balls that anchor all your different... Um, tendons and so forth everywhere. All right, so I showed you some of the sort of our size creatures that have been preserved. Well, what about the giants that they talk about? Well, let's talk about these little balls here. These are the anchors that are inside of the end. They're on the tips of tendon fibers. You see this? The tendon fibers come down and then they have to, they, otherwise they just pull right out. They need a ball at the end. They come down and the ball is there and the, the tendon can do that. It doesn't pull out, but it snaps. <laughs> then it's painful. Now, this is what these balls look like. Well, what does that mean? Does it have any significance to blood fossils? Well, let's see. Now, before we go see that, don't forget, these are literally stone balls, basically little tiny, tiny stone balls in us. They do come big. However, they're completely coated in, in organic material, which locks it into the body. It's, it's sewn into the body with membranes around it because everything has a membrane. So what would it look like if you could get these out of that skin and out of that tissue just laying around in, in the open air in a moist environment? I say moss would grow on there. You say, well, Roger, how could you prove that? Well, I think I can because here it is. <laughs> you see these? You ever seen anything like that? You ever seen anything like that? Now, the only reason these are so green is because the, the, the vital food source that surrounded that ball is still active. It was, this is in a frozen area. It's thawing out. And these things are, are starting to grow because, um, you know, the biology there is to grow. Look, every single one of these is green. You see how many there is? They're all the way up in this background up in here. They're everywhere. These creatures were stunningly gigantic. Jesus Christ even said the earth is a corpse. And then he talks about the earth being a body or being bodies. I, I'm going along with that. You know, I know this drags religion into it and all this stuff. I don't care. What's, what was said was said. And what is here is here. You take it for what it's worth to you. You see, this, this is kind of funny. I discovered this fluid-filled highway and wrote a paper on it in 2015. And it is, now they call it interstitium. They just did a paper, a, a, a thing on it in 2018 saying it's a new discovered organ. You see all these little balls in here? Those are the balls I was showing you laying all over the, the side of that hill. And they're all covered with green. This is the fluid-filled highway. That's the stuff that has a, a lot of good biology in it and that this is all these balls are they can give you stretch and you can move your skin and all that see how the skin's a little bit gathered here this is skin or it could be it could be um, an organ the coating of an organ it's a membrane and then you go into the the solid part of the organ or the flesh or whatever it is but this is meet your interstitium newfound organ that's this layer right here 
And this is from 2018. They just made the paper on it. My paper was 2015. I wrote the exact same thing. Fluid-filled highway, one giant system covers the entire body. And then I also talked about it being, being the spur locks where they attach and having the acupuncture points right in these attachment areas. There's something going on with that attachment, with the acupuncture points. I looked into that. They may do something. I don't know what they do. Stimulate the flow of the juices between, because each bag in your body, I mean, each organ in your body is its own bag. Let me show you something. You see this? This is a human lung, and it is a human lung. It's been DNA tested, CAT scanned. There's no question. It's a perfectly, it's a, it's a human lung. This is the pleur. That right there is the latch. I call it a spur latch spur lock and it's the same thing as this one right here that comes over and latch that into the body so you can jump around and get hit and run and play football and get bashed this way and bashed that way and this never gets pulled away from your body this is where the heart would have been this died flat like a pancake because it was in a great flood everything ran off because it got boiled it got all the flesh boiled right off and that was separates the organs. It's fascia facilitated fossilization. That's what I called it in my first paper. Now I call it just plain mud fossils. And that same lock, there's another new organ. They say this is a new organ, which is the, the interstitium. Well, this is another new organ, which is the spur lock. And that latches body parts into other body parts. And I know that they don't know about this because I've talked to the autopsy people. And they say, well, we always just considered it fascia. And that's just something that's pretty new, too. Nobody even paid any attention to that until I started talking about it, basically, in like 2015. Well, I was talking about it long before that. But in 2015, they started writing papers about it. And then now it's one of the biggest thing in medicine is this, this interstitium layer, because that's where all your enzymes and immunities live. This has far-reaching consequences, mud fossils. It's not just, oh, wow, there was giants and things like that, dragons living on the earth. Well, yes, there was. But it also has a lot of other things to think about. But I do consider the, the uh, you know, what it has to do with history and our really our, our roots and where we came from and where we maybe end up going. That, to me, is the big deal. The rest of this stuff is, is very, very interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go again with the 15-minute challenge because I got, this is this was another one. This was found, 15-minute challenge. This was the, um, this is a lung. And these are all the little tubes that are inside the lung. The black is the, the um, vein blood that's getting turned into red blood in, in your lungs. The red is when he takes on the oxygen. Now, that's the lung. When he found this, this is Gary Evans over in England. And again, I got them all over the world. I got people everywhere in the world now. And um, a lot of stuff I just can't keep up with. So if you if you send me pictures, that's great, and I love it. And I will I will try to do the best I can to remember your name and all that stuff. But I get a lot of stuff now. But anyway, this is what he saw first, and then he broke it open and he saw this. Now I'm not sure why he decided to break this thing open, but when he did, I think what he saw was this here first, and then he broke it open, seeing what what the hell is that. And then all that lung stuff popped out of there. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. That's a lung. There is virtually no question about that. The blood is still in there. Now, this is another 15-minute challenge. This is Phil Harris. Unfortunately, he passed away. But Phil took the 15-minute challenge. He went out and he saw this rock and he saw this red spot. Now, that's a heart. And so he picks it up. And he whacks it with a hammer and it splits right on the seam. There is a seam there. They just break right on that seam almost all. Most of the time you find them with the plumbing missing and the bottom part is just turned into stone. He had it still the blood in there. All that blood is there. He just put his finger on it and red blood. And this part is the vein blood and this is the yellow is the um, um, serum basically, the lymph. It, that's in, it, this is just incredible. And when he found it, he f obviously freaked out. And, um, oh, by the way, this one here is um, is what that lung was after a week or so, just sitting around dried out. It just turned into dust. And the reason is, some of them turn into stone, 
like this, completely totally stone. All right, and some of them turn into mud, and the ones that turn into mud primarily were eroded out away from their their fascia, which facilitated the fossilization and kept them sequestered inside the rubber bag. Once they're exposed, that's when they erode, and also when they're in salt water, which this was, it, psh, the erosion is almost instantly. So uh, there's a lot to consider. I understand the salacious ooze coming up from the ocean floors. I understand how the quartz, um, SiO2, attached to all of the molecular stuff. It filled all the veins, and they, that's why they say there's veins of quartz. Well, yes, they're veins or arteries, primarily arteries. But anyway, Lots to go over. All right, I, I think Tish found this too, but I'm not sure. I guess, like I say, I get so much stuff from so many people. <laughs> what the hell is that? Well, I looked at this now. I don't know how old this is, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is some kind of, of a technological thing. And the reason I can say that for absolute certainty is this right here. And you say, well, how is that? What's certain about that? Well, I can tell you what. This right here and this right here is something that filled this. I think it's a capacitor. There's a wire coming in from here. You see it? And there's a, these other wires. I think they're wrapped around in, in a circular thing. And, and I think a wire comes off this way and a wire comes off this way. I don't know what it does or what this material is, but... I worked with electronics, and they, they call it electrolyte. They have a, like a gooey substance inside. It's called electrolyte inside of capacitors. That's all I can think. Of. That's just a guess. But there's another one over here, and another one over here. They they have different looking characteristics to them. And like these here, these are some of the the things that you see inside of the the feet of the mud fossils. I mean, I don't know what to say. What are they engineering these and building these? I know they the notos had to be constructed. Somebody, somebody did something and then wiped all this stuff off the face of the earth. And even Yale says these things are unusual, bizarre, virtually nothing like it exists anymore on the face of the planet. Could it have been an, a failed evolutionary experiment? That's exactly what Yale says. We all know that there was supposed to be a worldwide great flood, which this, all of these organisms are from that worldwide flood. It's a worldwide three-layer strata, red bed, gray clay, black cap. The red bed is the runoff of all the flesh and blood. Blood has a lot of metals in it. It's heavy, it's dead, dense, and it sinks to the bottom first. Then all the organic stuff on top of that, the bone and the tendon and trees and all that, laid on top of that as a gray clay. So you got red bed, gray clay, and then all the fallout from the disaster that caused this destruction landed on top. So red bed, gray clay, black cap. That's the Triassic. It's everywhere in the entire world. How did it happen? I know how it happened. It happened because they boiled the flesh off of these creatures. And the reason it boiled was because we almost got hit by a giant comet, they called it at this time, was the size of Earth. And it bounced right off our atmosphere and virtually caused the Earth to... And all of this salacious ooze came up. Silica-rich oceans. They have no clue about it, Yale. I just, I, there's no question where it came from. And Velikowski did this. Velikowski was destroyed by people like people from Yale for coming up with these theories. They, they forced Velikowski or Velikowski's publisher to take his book off the shelf after 11 weeks of being number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Number one, 11 weeks in a row. And the, and the um, publisher, Macmillan, pulled the books off the bookshelves. That is book burning. And that is exactly what's happening today. Now they can just refuse to talk to you. They just can take your research, post it as their own, and refuse to talk to you. Exactly what happened to me at Yale. And it's happened now everywhere. My research, I found out that you just can't trust anybody. So I did all my own research. I found out that I was right. You cannot trust anybody. These researchers, these scientists, are not working in your interest. They're working to get funding. 
That's what I have found, and it's it's a it's a disgrace for education, and it's a it's really fiduciary. Uh, you know, they're not doing their fiduciary duty to the students. They don't care about the truth. It's all about forcing them to say what they tell them to say, and then they'll pass them. If they don't, they're done. That's why we haven't advanced forward in, since we have become enlightened. Enlightened means it becomes ind indoctrinated. Right? You're enlightened if you say what everybody else says. Otherwise, right, you're stupid. You're just a moron if you don't t say what everybody else says. And then you're a pseudoscientist and you're just a crazy guy living in the woods doing all this crazy stuff. No. Doing research and getting real researchers around the world that don't get paid a penny for doing anything they did. Everything that has been done for me and these other people is, is just strictly in the interest of research. It has nothing to do with money. And trying to find out what our original roots are and the real story of these mud fossils and all the things that these people are discovering all over the world that have just been, oh, I don't talk about that, we don't know anything about it. Well, you, you don't know it about it because you don't pay any attention to it. These creatures were stunningly large. These are the little balls that are in these, look at the size of these ones. This is Huntington Beach in the in, uh, United Kingdom. This is skin. That's skin, my friends. This right here is that interstitial layer. You see the bright red? That's the layer that protects you from getting invaded down into this layer. Down in that layer is where all those balls were. Remember I showed you before? So you got your mucosa, which is your skin or your fascia. You got your interstitium, which is here. That's the fluid-filled highway. And then you've got this, which had all these balls in it. This is what it looks like in the body. The skin or mucosa it's in an in a organ, let's say, which is a fa um, membrane. Right under you have your fluid-filled highway, and then after that you have all these pockets, little webby-looking things that are basically the flesh. And it can stretch this way and stretch that way. And then when it erodes, all the water washing against here, the balls are so tough they just fall to the bottom, and everything else turns into mud. Well, did it happen? Yes, it did. Here's the balls, and here's the mud. <laughs> there's, the, there's the guy's flesh. Where are you? I'm telling you, it's just what it is. And if you can't accept it, good for you. G F Y, good for you. Okay, this is Lydia Tarhan from Yale, the author of this paper, the primary author, um, working with Derek Briggs, who already had all this information. And she said she, they they. they Many of these creatures, outright bizarre in appearance, do not resemble any organism alive today. Yes, giants, dragons, all these kind of things. Says, are the Etikara organisms some sort of failed evolutionary experiment? Well, that's a, yes, they were. It says a big part of the answer involves figuring out how the fossils are able to form. I told you exactly how with the silicates and all that, and they, they know it's a sil silica-rich oceans, and it was because of the flood. It's a triple, three layers worldwide. It's impossible not to understand this. They say they're entirely soft-bodied. They were before of the evolution of shells, teeth, bones, which are typically only parts of an organism to become fossilized. In their way of understanding fossilization, mud fossils is totally different. So they missed everything. Now they're saying they were only soft-bodied. They're just jellyfish, and they were—they're saying they were up to a meter long. That's no, a meter wouldn't even have been a. I have—I have one that's a fingertip that's a meter long. So they're so wrong, it's unbelievable. And then they say it happened during a time where much richer in dissolved silicates than they are today. Yes, and they don't know why. They have no reason for that to have happened. It enabled, the, they say, the sand around the animals to turn into rock over a matter of hours or years. Yes, it was pretty quick. As a matter of fact, this is a test I've been doing. This has been since about six or seven months. There's two mice in there somewhere <laughs> with silicon, and um, I don't know how it's going to work out. I'll, I'll dig into that probably in the next day or so. So stick in, stick around. I got a lot of research going on. I just don't have time to do it. I just got too much to do. So anyway, um, they're saying it could have happened within a few years or hours, actually, not in thousands or millions of years. There is no thousands or millions of years with this. There's a few thousand. That's about it. 
that occurred are rapidly buried by sand in underwater storm events. The whole earth was covered. What is an underwater storm event? The entire world is just the same strata. It's a Triassic. This is ridiculous that they don't understand this. And then they say they use detailed microscope. That's, that's what I use. And it was this guy, Dale, Derek Briggs, who I submitted all my stuff to years and years before this. And I was so frustrated with him that I wrote to David Attenborough. I don't know if I showed you this or not, but I will again because I was, this goes back, David Attenborough was nice to write back to me, but he didn't realize I was talking about the same things he's looking into. This is from 2014. And he said he was mystified. He never did any research or he never did a video on mud fossils. He, I saw him do a little clip about leaves laying in mud and how they made patterns. So I figured, well, maybe he'd at least talk to me. No, he, he said he's only interested in things millions of years old. But he did write back. It was very, very nice. But at this time, I was just off the wall frustrated. This is 2014. Then I had all DNA tests and CAT scans done. It didn't matter. Nothing helped. And now... Derek Briggs and his cohorts down here got supported from everywhere. National Science Foundation has me blocked. I can't do anything. They, they, I try to post something, gone. And um, and NASA, same thing. I, I tried to contact the NASA about Mars. All that stuff on Mars. The Mars crab, the Mars Morse code, the Mars blueberries, all biological. No question whatsoever. And um, they refuse to talk about it. Now, that's 10 years ago. The amount of money we have spent doing this ridiculous stuff and the amount of money National Science Foundation just squirts out to everybody is insane. You know, if, you know, I, I'm not a political guy. I, I don't like the idea, I don't like any politicians, to be perfectly honest with you, but if we could get some reality from the politicians, they will not respond. I've tried everything, and nobody, not a single one has ever responded. None of them. Zero. The Secretary of Education, I could walk to his house from my house. He's in the next town over. No response from anybody. None. Zero. And this is education we're teaching kids. It's not true. They know it's not true. But it doesn't matter. As long as you fulfill your obligation to say what you're told to say, you will be rewarded with a piece of paper that says you're smart because you can repeat what you're told to say. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. There's no, that's inconsequential anymore. The way of truth has become defamed, my friends. Anyway, we're going to go, I'm going to just keep on plugging out these videos. I'm, you know, right now, I, I, I know I got to be a little careful because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being shut down a little bit here and there, you know, kind of. A lot. <laughs> and I, I don't want to be blocked forever, but I think this is, I don't think anybody should stop me from saying this stuff. And I think by now, it's, there's so much evidence out there that it shouldn't be, be um, just dismissed anymore out of hand. It's just too much. How can you possibly miss this? It's impossible. The only way, you know, look at this. To send this to a professor that's supposed to be researching the Etikara biota, the guy over in Minnesota or what, no, uh, yeah, I guess, I can't remember where she's from, Missouri. And I, I had two people in Missouri finding the same things, and they went to the guy that's supposed to be doing Etikara biota, a friend of Derek Briggs, who was apparently studied from him, learned the same thing, just turn your back on everything, and um, he's turning his back on this. What, are these, what would a student think about that if they knew this? And then they're talking about re, giving student fund, refunding student loans. They should make the colleges refund it. I should get at least $500 million, $500 million from Yale to start a true school, a real school. And then they should put an iron fence around Yale University and rename it... <laughs> The uh, a place for the criminally insane, <laughs> because that's what it's boiled down to. Yes, insanity. They, 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 they don't even know this a foot. This is the heel stone. It's called a heel stone. At, at, oh my God! At um, 
<laughs> Stonehenge. It's the heel stone. It's a foot. <laughs> Nobody can miss this. It even has the little blood things right at the end of the tips of the toes. The blood supply. I mean, it's just, it's, it's insane. It's called the heel stone. And there was another one right next to it. It was called a twin stone. <laughs> Somebody moved it. This is like 450 feet down the road from from uh, Stonehenge. And all the, all the stones at Stonehenge are giant creature stones. Just like this. Look at this. That's a foot. That's the bottom of a foot. That's one of these. <laughs> and this is the ball of the guy's heel. It's eroded away a lot. Well, not a lot. Some. That would have been, you know, like the flesh on your foot, but you've got a ball inside there, too. And this is all the guy's body here. <laughs> it's just out of control crazy. You know, what's all these racks doing here? Well, it's the guy's body. All right, this is another um, foot. This, I believe, had the toes, but remember how they come across the front? They don't come straight out. And it, this is a totally transitioned into sandstone. And it died with this side down, like that. All right, so that was the guy's foot. Now, there, I, I got to show you this. This is amazing. So here's the toes running down the side, the same thing like tissue show. There's a bone, you can see it in the right shadows. Let me see if I can get this. You see that round spot right there? That, that's a bone was came down. This this could be a whole another style of foot. I don't know. There was a, I have another, at least two more different styles of feet. Now, there's that bone, and then there's another bone right here. There's two spots where the artery was. And guess what? There's still blood in those arteries and there's moss growing in that blood. I'll show you in a microscope. It's, it's, it's amazing. Alright, you see where the microscope's facing right down here, that's at the very back of the heel. That's where the arteries come in. And I'll show you anatomically. It's basically the same thing. And of course, there's where the toes go off. And there's usually a, a little bump here, just like there is on this one. Oh, you can see there's that bump there too. They, they have that bump in the middle that just, your foot does too. So that's the same bump. And it comes back up here to where the bones are. And, uh, and I'm gonna fo focus in right now. I'm gonna come up and we're gonna look at an artery. All right, now don't forget, we're looking right here, up in the microscope. Now, what you're seeing there, if you carefully look, that right there is an artery, right around there. It's still growing down into that artery, and, and there's blood in there somewhere. It doesn't grow there for no reason. Whoops, I just touched it and shook it. Now, this is turned really virtually 99% quartz, sand stone, you know, SiO2 stone. Now, that's one of them. Now, there's another one here. I'm going to see if I can find the other one. They're tiny. Uh, there it is. You see, there it is right there. There's blood coming out of this one and out of whatever that spot is there. But that's, that's where the blood grows. And then, of course, the other one that I showed you originally over here. All right, so that's what we got. And that has been sitting in my shop. This, this has been sitting in my shop at least 10 years. <laughs> and I think, oh, I don't know, a year or so ago, I just put a little water on it to see, and it turned green like instantly. And uh, 
it's crazy, but that's what we got. And like I say, this one died on its foot. Usually you can find a really flat spot. This one died, I believe, on the side. You see, you, you got a flat spot, and, and then, then uh, they're all products of the Great Flood, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I have another style that's just totally, insanely crazy. You see that bump right there? Same thing. So I, but I don't think this is exactly like this because this has a bone right here. You see? I don't know if you can see that, but in the right shadow you can. There's a there's a bone there, and then there's another big bone here. This is is a little different style. That's not normal to, to my way of thinking. A big one here, and then another one here, and then the blood comes down in the back here. Uh, this one here, you've got your, your tibia, which is the main bone that comes down. And then on the side, you have your fibula, which is broken off. And they all, they all bro break off, every single one of them. So that's just standard. Now, this one didn't break off. If that is the tibia, a fibula, but I, I can't. It's, it's but it wouldn't break off anyway because it was laying like this. Now there is something here that is um, looks biological to me. What you, you know? I, they had so many different styles of feet. I'm going to show you another one. Absolutely stunning, gigantic. I call it the Oompa Loompa. Okay, I know you're going to say, Roger, you're crazy. That's not a foot. Well, I'm going to say, yes, it is. No question, it's a foot. I've looked at this in extreme detail. That right there, I've got a light here. Hold on. Oh. Okay, get your mud fossil eyes on. This is going to be difficult to see. But this is, right here, is the the um, skin basically surrounding the socket which I have my finger in right now which is right there in that spot is the um, attachment to the fibula on the side I'll show you in a second right there that is it right there this whole round spot it's hard to see but I will show you there's a pocket in there it's the same as all the rest of them now, I'm going to point down at what I'm looking at right now, but don't forget, that's, that's the pocket. Now, here's what we're looking at right here. That, my friends, is a foot, and that is where the fibula was, and it just fell right off. This, whoops, side was down, like this. That's how it died, flat like that. And the fibula just fell right off like that. Now, this t flat top, was that, that didn't happen because of the flood. That's the way the guy's foot was. It was flat like that on the top, it's as far as I can determine. Now, back here is where the cradle is and the, the uh, tibia came down. Right in this area. And it would have rocked in that cradle. And this was on the side. They all had one here and one on the side. And there's all different styles. Look at that thing. Oh, man, look at that sucker. And you can tell, I mean, the balls of his feet are easy to see. There's one here, one here, and the main bumper one back here in the back. This is literally just like my belt, this kind of skin. Let me show you. All right, that's that fabric. Now, I got a little water on there, and there's a white stripe running down the middle. That's where there was the separation of the tissues and you can see the fabric. Now here's the water is seeping in and it seeps in very quick. 
All right. Now you see. Well, let me get up real close. You see those little white fabrics in there? This has pulled apart, and all the bloody, gooey balls and so forth are out to the sides. That's basically like it's just leather, basically just like leather. All right, this is the big, the oompa loompa foot. And these are the little balls and straps. You can see them here and there. I got some water on here in spots, so it's a little moist. But th there's these little black balls. You see them on these little tiny black balls? And, and these white straps that are attached to them. It's hard to see, but they are. They're, there's, they're, and they're all over the place. And that's basically what leather is. You see this? This is basically the same as, in other words, this is the oval loop of foot. Now I'm going to show you the other one and how cl close this fabric is, and then I'm going to show you along how close that is. They're all membranes or, or skin. All right, this is the foot. It's in the microscope. And here it is right here. This is what the, the skin looks like, and it is it's leather, just like my belt. All right, now we're pointing right at the back where the bone comes down and it follows the vein and artery. A little water makes things stand out usually pretty good. Now, you see how dark that is? You gotta give it a minute here. We gotta give it a minute to dry up. So what do we see? We see blood. Now I see blood. I don't know what you see. All right, and then of course you see all this fabric. And it's drying up pretty good now. But I, I believe the vein is over in here somewhere, the black blood. And that's obviously the red blood, the artery. That's what I'm taking away from this. All right, the other... It's blood of that, I'm absolutely certain. And the fabric, I'm absolutely certain of that, too. Now, this was the foot. I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to put the lung in there. All right, now let's come down here. You see the lung? Now, all the fabric in your body that's this flexible, that moves around has to have straps and balls. That's just the way it works. These are the balls, these are the straps. And you stretch and you pull and everything and then it comes back together into that nice pattern like that. But the balls and the straps are in leather, they're in um, any of the organs that move, like your your lungs, they, they're rubber bags basically. They <laughs> Something's gotta happen to them. So that's what this is. This is a special type of fabric that is the flexible fashion. Elastic fashion, fashion, let's call it that. Okay, this is, as it says on my belt, genuine cowhide. Look, you see all these little black spots? Those are those little black balls. And every one of them is a strap attached to a strap. Now, in the no-toes I showed you, and in the lung, you, you don't see that easily. However, this is cowhide. It has to stretch into the exact same things as your feet do and your, your, all that kind of stuff. Now, watch this. I'm going to move over to the belt buckle, and now we can see the straps are attached to those balls. You see? When the buckle is pulled, it's pulled the straps away from the balls and now we can see it. But normally you just see this, which is what I showed you on the nose toes and, and the lung and, and the other stuff. Anything that has to be flexible and move and pull and stretch is like your skin and so forth. you got these balls everywhere in your body. There's billions of them, literally. I'm sure there is. Maybe more than that. And, and um, every one of them is attached to a little tiny strap and they pull and they tug and they move and they pull and so forth and they always come back to where the ball was attached. Alright, this is the foot I showed you the moss growing in the back here. And, the and that's where, it, it's, got, it's got a similarity to the human foot, but the blood comes down here. These are all red-blooded creatures, so there's the same 
blood. And this one has the same thing. The red blood is coming right out of here. And that's the black blood, which is a vein blood. And because it's got to be served with, with the artery in a vein. So it, so it is what it is. Now, let me show you something. Wherever tendons and things invest in your body, they seem to make a circle and then a, like a lock and then a bunch of little, you know, anchors, which are the tendon balls and wrapping and holding this. I, at first, I thought that was some kind of a medallion or something. It looks so perfect. But all of these things come wrapping around and they get tagged in with this. That's what it seems to me. And again, this is a no-to, and that, remember that shape, remember where it is, and it's, it locks the, the fabric into the front. Now, I have the tiniest little no-to, and I'm, I'm like almost 100% certain it's a no-to, and it has a certain similar thing going on in the front of it. You see how cute this is? <laughs> That is a little tiny no-to. You see how it, the, well, you see how it's angled off here, the things are angling off? There is where the um, fibula is, right there. And we can, I'm gonna look at it, I'll show you right in the microscope. You can see right there, that little dot in the center, that's where the fibula attached. This is a no-to. That's where the bumper is on the bottom of your foot. And there's where that latch is in the front. Now this one has that round circle. This one has a similar sort of thing. I'm gonna put it in a microscope and you'll be able to see it better. But can you imagine that little tiny thing? I, you know, if I'm right, and I'm pretty sure I am, and I think that died something like this. And right here, let's, let's, let's start by looking at where the fibula attaches. Because that, I think, is pretty evident. All right, hold on. All right, this is that tiny little no-to. You see that? That's where the fibula came down. Over here is where the the um, tibia was. And there's vein and artery over here. Now, this right here, remember, that right there is the no-to, the whole thing. That's the front of the no-to. All right. And it has that same look to it where the, the, the toes run off sideways like this. And here they are in the front. If you get it just in the right position, you can actually see where they would look like toes. Well, there it is right there. Boom, boom, boom. They have that sort of look to it. Now, going down the side, where the fibula would sit, where my finger is stroking right there, right there is the center of the fibula. That's that little black dot is the center of the fibula. And then it just, you see? this round whole thing and that's the center of it and as you can see it's right dead center exactly where it should be to be the fibula and up in the top here is where the the um, um, tibia would rock and this now let's look at the bottom See, look at that. This, this is like the toes. Those are almost like toes. But it's just one big flap. And you see it on the bottom? It's one big flap right across. And there's a tendon running into it. This is the cool part. This is the really cool part. All right. Think of what you're looking at now. What I just showed you was, hold on, i got to get my little feather, where's my pointer, here we go. This is the no-toe part. This is like that circle that was in the front of the other foot, the other no-toe. This is like the balls of the guy's feet. 
and there's a tendon there that is allowing that to rock, it appears to me. You, you got to keep putting water on these things. They, they eat it up like crazy. Now, right there, there's a, like a tendon attachment that runs up to this. And when it, it dries up a little bit, you can see there's actually a pattern to it. It's almost like it's sewed in there. But you can see, you see the balls of his feet around here. One, you see this? This is rocking on, on that. So when you, the, the guy stepped on, on this, on his toes, which are no toes, this thing would, would you know, stretch up with the toes, it looks like to me. This, this is the tiniest, cutest little thing, isn't it? That's it right there. And that's the word. Right there is where the uh, fibula fits right in. Just exactly where it should be. No, this, is, this is a no toe. There's absolutely no question in my mind. And there's the toes right there that aren't really toes yet. This was before there was toes. And there it is at the bottom. See how perfect that is? Look at that. That is absolutely amazing. You see that stuff right up here? Let me see if I can focus in a little better. That's the best I'm going to be able to do. Now I'll dry it up and we can't see it all that well. But you can see the balls of his feet and then that strap is what it is hinges. To me that looks like it hinges to this, all, this whole thing up here. Let me see if I can settle it down here. All right, so you know what it looks like. This is the front of the noto. Going that way. My claim is these are the balls of the feet. They sure look like it to me. They, they extend upwards like little balls. You see them? And then this strap that runs up here I believe attaches to this assembly here, which is really what you would consider the toes, but there are no, not any toes here. And this is the little medallion that locks that in. Basically the same as this little medallion in mine here down at the bottom. Alright, and we're just looking at that little bitty tiny cutie. And this is the medallion. This is the medallion that locks this one in. You see it? You see what the circle has got a little dot in the center and it locks in all that stuff. And so does the one up here in the microscope. <coughs> there it is right there. That is a tiny little noto. That's the same thing that we were looking at <laughs> on the big full size one. There were so many different crazy things living here, it's just hard to fathom. There it is right there. And that locks this in. You see it? This must be able to rock. <coughs> you see how it almost looks like it's sewed in here? Very strange. Mud fossils has made the world strange because it's reality now. Right there, that's the the fibula. And you're looking down at the guy's foot, and that's right there. That round spot right there is where the main bone came down, and the fibula sat on the side, and they attached together. It just comes straight up, and it's a bone. These colors are colors of blood, 
and that little pattern right there in the front is like like almost like the beginning of toes you see the white area there hold on you see this is almost like they're starting to develop something that looks like toes or one big toenail or something on the foot but this is a foot I looked at this for a long time before I really could make my mind up, and yeah, I, I, I'm 100% sure this is what it is. Now, this is my flawless no-toe in the microscope, and this is one of those pins, and I believe this has two pins. I'm going to put a little water on here, and it'll be flashy for a while. You won't see much, but you can see that's the spot we want to look at. Let me dry it up. Before it settles down too much, you get a good look at it. Because it dries up quick and you can't really see it well. But you see the red? And you see the pin. That's, that's the pin. Now, what it does, I don't know. It does it rock something on that? I don't know. But there's a second one, and it's down over here. Here, I got, let me get it lined up, hold on. All right, this could be a little harder to pick out, but this is, it's, it goes right around in a circle like this. Now there is a little nick in here. Now I'm not sure what that is about, but there, the, the pin is here and it comes right around and then the, the springs circle around this pin like that. But, uh, you really can't see that, can you? Because I, I can't. And I know what I'm looking for, so I'm sure you can't see it. Hold on. This is the outline of it right here. You're never going to see it. This is the outline of it right here. Well, like I say, you're never going to really see that, I don't think. right there that's and that pin hold on I'll show you in the camera here oh. you know sometimes from further off you can see things better all right now the pin I was referring to is right here if you can see that that's one and that's the other one. This one here you can see pretty good. This one here was very, very difficult to see. But I think you can make it out now if you look. You see that circle right there? And these are springs. They're some kind of springs. Now the one up there, I don't know what it does. The other one, the other no toes don't have that sort of configuration basically they have two springs but they're not, not configured like that I don't think there's a lot of work to do on this but that I say is the pin and the springs rock like this and when you stepped on the front it would push this up against this plate here and it would spring load it and it would just come back right down to its normal position based on this pin and that's the, the flexible part of the front right there and there's that same bump I showed you on a sandstone one they, they all have very similar situations and some of them are extremely different and I have at least four different styles. After that, who knows how many there was. And you can see how t tiny they were and how cute they were. Doesn't that look cutie? <laughs> you 
Pip, 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 pip. So that's what we got. The land of mud fossils, from the littlest to the biggest. <laughs> you want to see one that's really wacky? That right there is the bone. All right. This is a foot. There's the arch of the foot. Now, <laughs> that's all I can tell you. That was a foot at one time of some kind of a creature. What it was, I don't know. And it would have flopped. And these are the bone areas right here. You know, they, they had all kind of different different things. I, I believe this is a foot. You know, that's basically what you see underneath all of the feet, is this exact same style, and then you've got a big bumper and a bumper and a bumper in the front. They hit here and here and here, and, and this was the flexible part. You had to be gooey, just like this one, same thing. Same gooey. Or a bump, or a bump, or a bump. And gooey in the middle. Blip, blip, blip. They, were, they must have been flexible, is all I can tell you. But they're definitely our feet. And to, to have them just dismissed out of hand, is, it's not good, you know? That's just not reality. So let's, let's investigate this, you know? Mention it to people. And uh, see if we can get your professors and so forth to, to try to answer the questions that you have. You, you, they're supposed to answer questions. They're supposed to tell you things that are true, and this is true. As far as I'm concerned, I don't see how anybody can deny it anymore. Well, you can't deny it. All you can do is dismiss it. It's just it's undeniable now. DNA, CAT scans, specimens, they can be retested. All of this stuff, new species, giants, dragons. It's very, very similar to what the earliest texts were said things were. So that's it. Thank you. I love you all.